Hi everyone, this is Gleb Bakhmarov. I have an application that has a chat. In order to chat, you have to log in. That means you have to create a user. In this video, I will show how to create a user and log in by creating data session using the plugin I wrote called Cypress Data Session. This is available on GitHub and has lots of options. And let's look how we can use those options to create a user in one data session and log in another data session. And if we run the test, it will be very quick. This uh, user and the data session are cached. So first, let's create a user. So before each test, now the user could be any uh, user, could have any username, but I'll use, let's say, Gleb, and this is a password. So Cypress data session gives me a command, right? Called data session, not surprisingly. Uh, the name is whatever I want to give. Because I'm creating a user, I'll give it a name, user. Most important is the setup. Without data session, this is what you would do. Whatever commands you put in the setup, this is what you do every time um, the test runs. So in my case, what do I want to do? Well, I probably want to go to you know the page, root page, click create account, and it should be visible. So this is what it does. It just runs the setup, right? If I run again, it recreates the setup. So why does it do it? Well, because we are not telling this Cypress data session that this user is still valid. But before we do that, we actually have to register the user and this is how we can do it. After we go to this registration page, we have to find registration form, enter the username and the password and click create. Well, this will give us the user on the back end, but we need to know it's the user's ID. Luckily, I already have a couple of Cypress tasks defined in my plugin file, and one of them is the one that finds the user by username. We'll get a user object, and we will return from the setup function. We are returning username, password, and ID property that we just fetched from the database. Now, whatever this setup function yields, from its chain of Cypress commands, that's what will be cached by the Cy data session. Okay, so let me run it once. Okay, now notice it says the username already exists because we've been creating the user. So let me just quickly clear all the users in the database. Let's run it again. Oh, okay, so we create the user. Now, here's the most important part of this is the validation function. So when do we want to avoid recreating the user? When that user is there already. So we'll create a validate method and I'll give it an argument save. Now this save is wherever we yield it from the setup function. So it's an object with username, password, and ID. And why do we need ID? Because we want to use another side task that gets user by ID, not by username, but by ID and gives us the object or undefined if it's not there, okay? So now when we have an object, we can actually compare what we found in the database with whatever saved user is. And the best way is to say, uh, I don't need to recreate the user if I found it and found username is equal to saved username and found uh, ID is equal to saved ID. Right? We want the username to match and the ID to match. Now, um, the ID has an underscore because the TypeScript doesn't know that it. it's a property. Okay? So, here's what happens now. That user with that ID is still valid. Right? Before the setup runs, the data session executes the validate, gives it whatever it has cached, and it finds in a database the user with that ID, same username. So we know that we don't have to run through the setup again. Great. So this is how we have one data session named user, which just creates a user object. Now we have to log in. And for that, I'll create another data session. And this time, instead of an error function, I'll use the function syntax. I use the function syntax because then I can say I need username and the password to log in. And side data session automatically puts whatever we save in the cache, which is yielded by the setup, as an alias. 
and the alice is whatever the name was. So by using function, we can access, I mean function right here, we can access that alias object using this dot user. Okay, so what do we do here? Well, we need another, we need another data session. So the name, let's say, logged in user. We need the setup. So what do we want to do to log in? Well, if we didn't have a data session, then we could say the following. We're going to go to the home page. We're going to find the login form, which should be visible. We'll type username and password, but ah, uh, passed right here. And we will click login and we should end up on the rooms page. Perfect. All right. If you run again, the user is still the same, but we log in again and again because, well, we're not saving anything. We're not validating it. So what can we use to log in instantly and what should we save in our data session? Well, I know that to log in, I'm using a session cookie. It's called connect SID. I can actually look up at the dev tools. So what I will do here, I will say get cookie and connect SID and you know, it should exist just to make sure that cookie is set. So after we log in, that cookie should be there. All right. Now, in order for me to reuse that cookie, I have to create the method validate to check that cookie. Cookie, right? This is what we yielded from the setup. So we'll have that cookie. Now, the only thing I need to validate, I'll say, like, return boolean so the cookie is not null. Now, here's the interesting thing. Notice that we are checking if a user is logged in, session is valid. It is valid because the cookie is there in memory. Okay, now we don't want to go through the setup again. We already have a cookie. So we need a separate set of commands that are only executed if the cookie is present and it's valid. So the site data session has another method that you can provide and it's called uh, recreate. So this is called when the cookie is valid. If it's invalid, it calls setup again. If it's valid, it calls recreate. And so what do we need to do? Well, we need to set the cookie and visit our protected page. And we can actually validate that we are logged in correctly by checking that we're not redirected back to the home page. Okay, so from the cookie, which is, comes from memory, we're setting it, visiting the page, and if everything goes correctly, we should be instantly logged in. Let me run it again. User is there, the cookie is there, set the cookie immediately, we are logged in. Now, here is the tricky point, or well, not tricky, right? Uh, before I continue, uh, let me just check the username. So I do want to check if the user info on the page after we logged in, right, should have text and in this case, this user username, right? Again, coming from the data session Alice. Here's the thing. If that user is invalid, what happens to the session? Well, the cookie is invalid because that user has been, you know, it becomes invalid, is not no longer, is no longer in the database. So we have data sessions that depend on each other. The user has to be valid for, in order for data session logged in user to be valid. And so the logged in user data session depends on the user. And if the user is invalidated and recomputed, we have to recompute the logged in user. And here's how we can do it using the data session command. Inside the second data session, we just have to say depends on the user. We just list all the data sessions that this session should check. And if any one of those has been recomputed, then we have to reset up our session as well. Perfect. So let's see. I'm going to run this. Everything is good. Right? Now let me go and remove the user, not the login, but the user session. So I'll say, uh, let me just clear the users. So I clear the user from the database. So when the data session user check if that user is still there, it will say no, it's invalid, so it will rerun the setup again. Perfect. Data session is invalid. I mean, uh, the data session for the user is invalid. So it recomputes the user by making a new one goes through all the pages. Now it gets to the data session logged in user 
and it says recomputing log in user because the parent session has been recomputed. And so now it logs in again, saves the cookie again, and is logged in. And if I run, everything stays the same because nothing has changed in any of the sessions. And this is how one session can depend on another session through depends on parameter.